Before we get started this week with the show, folks, I want to remind you to check out Etsy.com forward slash shop forward slash April's Sensations. That's right. April's Sensations. Pro wrestler, model, cosplayer, writer, April Hunter. You know, she has her own shop on Etsy. It's fantastic. And I can speak from experience. I mean, I've purchased some candles and soaps and what have you from her. Just really, really cool stuff. And with the holidays coming up for that special someone in your life, including yourself, this is a great time to pick up some of this handcrafted, amazing made in the USA stuff. We're talking about April's scent. Sensations. If you want to support a pro wrestler and somebody that is really cool, small business owner, you definitely want to check it out. I'm going to give you that website again, folks. That is Etsy. So that's E-T-S-Y dot com forward slash shop forward slash April's Sensations. And let me spell that out. A-P-R-I-L-S-S-C-E-N-T. S A T I O N S April sensations, baby. I'm telling you, check it out. Let them know the Duke sent you over there. Enjoy yourselves. And now let's get on with the show. You're locked in. Look at what we have here, folks. To the only show that matters. The cream of the crop. Duke loves wrestling. And there is no one that does it better than your host. I have come here to chew bubblegum and kick ass. The Duke. And I'm all out of bubblegum. Welcome back to Duke Loves Wrestling, the show about pro wrestling and everything else. Folks, I want to thank each and every one of you for all the wonderful birthday wishes. Thank you very much. I had a great uh, International Duke Day, aka 1212, was a good time there. Really had a good time. And, and you know, I, I played our, our greatest hits of audio messages that I've received through the years and, you know, some of the ones that I've received recently as well. So that was a that was a hilarious laugh because as you heard, some of these folks here, they've given me a hard time through the years. But, you know, it's all good. It's all fun there. Don't mind it all. I enjoy it. One of the things about me, as you all know, I I enjoy when people challenge me. You know, I don't I don't want to talk to people that just agree with me all the time. I want to hear some perspective that's different from mine because that's how we learn. And also, if somebody's just completely wrong about something, then I'm gonna expose them, right? Which brings me to this week. I'm bringing on a guy that has consistently given me a hard time online. All he does, for the most part, is disagree with me on a bunch of different things, and it's pretty ridiculous, and I, I just figured, you know what? Because you know me. I lean into things, folks. I don't just sit back and play games. I'll lean into it, and when I got somebody who thinks they know better than the Duke, then I got to, you know what? Just come on, Duke loves wrestling. Let's settle it once and for all. So without further ado, welcome for the very first time ever on the to the Duke Loves Wrestling podcast, he is the guy that knows how to run the numbers. He's the guy that knows who's who and what's what. I'm not going to say he knows where the dead bodies are because I don't want to get him in trouble. I know the feds <laughs> might be listening or what have you. But they call him New England's finest. We're talking about the one, the only, Boston Smitty. Smitty, what's going on, brother? Oh, uh, nothing much. Thanks for having me, Duke. You know, I'm just uh, ready to tell you why you're wrong about things, you know? Well, I don't know about that, Smitty. You can tell me that I'm wrong, but that, but you're wrong every time you tell me I'm wrong, just so you know. So I, I know. I but... put that out there, you know. Before we get started, Smitty, how did you hold up here with all this snow? Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm still awake. Uh, <laughs> I mean, we got about 18 inches over here. It was pretty – I'm not even going to lie. It was pretty, pretty heavy. It took about, about an hour and a half to shovel out, so – it was a bit of a long day, but you know what? It's New England. We get snow. It happens. We deal with it. <laughs> well, you know what, Smitty? Hour and a half, 18 inches of snow. I know that even though you finished shoveling, there was more that came down. Uh, you, you deserve a beer. You deserve a blunt. You deserve something out there. Make sure, make sure you give yourself a treat uh, for all that hard work you did. 
Oh, I'll be sure to. Don't you worry. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the last nice thing I'm going to say to you <laughs> right now, Jack. You're, you're in a lot of trouble with me, Smitty. All and right. We're going to start right off the top hot and heavy here. Uh, AEW, they <laughs> have uh, come out with a new line of toys, action figures, for all of you who don't like it to be called toys. <laughs> they're toys. They're, they're not like uh, real wrestling action figures. I can call them toys. Um, and let's just say that uh, AEW has done what they always do. They market one thing and they deliver something else. And that something else is always less than what they market. OK, so I want you as as uh, President elect Joe Biden would say, I want you to be straight with me for a second here, Smitty. You cannot honestly tell me that that latest line of action figures, a.k.a. toys that AEW has put out, you can't tell me that that's a quality product that they put out there. I can say it's a quality product, but I can say that the last line of action figures did look better. However, I've definitely seen WWE put out worse looking action figures. All right, so l- l- here's what we're not going to do, Smitty, because I see the game that you're trying to play right <laughs> off. Okay, when I ask you about AEW, you-, you don't bring up the WWE. You don't try to play a straw man argument here, Smitty. Okay, I know where you come from here, and I know these games that you guys play in your neighborhood here. I'm a little swifter than that. All right, you know damn well that AEW did a shoddy job with this line of action figures. Why are you trying to stick up for them, Smitty? So, okay, I will say, the Pac action figure, it looked fine with the exception of the face. I don't know what what the hell happened with that face. The Rio action figure, I honestly didn't see much of a problem with. Again, though, I will say the face probably left a little desire. The Orange Cassidy one, I got no idea what they were doing. I'll be completely honest with that. I will say that I do not think it's necessarily a bad product. But I can agree that it is a less quality product that they put out in the first batch. And it's real easy to say that they put more quality into the first batch because of the ca- the wrestlers that were in the first batch. However, something I'm personally curious about is if the whole COVID pandemic and things of that nature had any effect on the actual production of these figures. Well, first first and foremost, Smitty, I don't know what's going on over there, if there's an earthquake or what have you, but something keeps hitting your mic. I oh, think you're so nervous about the, the, <laughs> the nonsense that you're saying right now. That's why you keep tapping the mic, because I don't think you believe half of what you're saying. You know damn well that all elite wrestling, AEW, uh-huh. Tony Khan and, and, and Cody and the Brain Trust over there, all they do is is claim that they're going to go one way, they go a totally different way, and the way that they go is just wrong. Wrong, wrong, wrong. Those action figures look nothing like the, the characters that they're trying to portray, and it's really embarrassing. But this is this is old hat for AEW. I mean, all you got to do is take a look at their programming, and you notice that they claim that they were going to give us women's wrestling, and they're going to take it seriously. They're so diverse. I want you to explain to me, Smitty, since you are an AEW fan, you watch religiously every week, you stick up for them every week for some strange reason, you give me a hard time online every week about this, why does AEW only feature one women's match per week, and why is it, more often than not, the shortest match on the card? It's a good question. You know, I've said it in the group before, and I have no issue in admitting it. The booking in AEW for the women's division is not the greatest. However, one thing I am personally curious about, because, yes, we it's real easy to get on AEW about how they're not developing in their women's division, things of that nature. Why is it that the NWA women are featured more on AEW television than the AEW women's wrestling? Now, you can say it's because of skill level, because... Let's face it, Thunder Rosa and Serena Deep, probably the two, you could probably say that they're probably one, two best female wrestlers in the country. It might be debatable, 
but they're definitely up there. When you compare that to the talent that's on the AEW roster, you know, you got you got Britt, you got Big Swole, you know. Uh, I'm not personally a fan of Evilis, and uh, I can't even remember her partner's name. That's how much of a fan I'm not of them. Uh, I think what AEW's issue is right now is why are we featuring the NWA women's division better than their own division? If you, I feel like if you take out the NWA women, that you have much more opportunities for the uh, AEW women to shine. Now, why are they only getting one one match a night? I can't give you. I can't give you that answer. I, you know, I can't give you that answer. I can say that it does seem like AEW is trying to find their stride lately. I would say that their booking was a lot better pre-COVID, and this includes the women's division. Uh, Because it wasn't until, I believe, now correct me if I'm wrong, we didn't really see NWA women wrestling for AEW until the pandemic started. Am I correct about that? Yeah, I I mean, listen, I I think that you're trying to find a way to uh, justify the unjustifiable, okay? I think that's what's going on here, which I don't understand okay. why. Um, clearly, there's something wrong with the AEW brass and their perception of their own women and their own promotion. I could agree the with way that. that. They treat them is as if they are they are no good at all, right? I mean, Thunder Rosa is in the top five most featured wrestlers on the women's division in AEW for 2020. I think when you, when you yep. look at the, the statistics on women who have wrestled for 20 minutes or more in AEW in 2020, <laughs> Thunder Rosa is like number four or something like that. How is that possible? She's not even on the AEW contract. It, they, that's exactly exactly what I'm thinking as well. It may, it may possibly, like you just said, maybe they don't have the faith in the division. That's where I could say I have an issue with AEW. You have Britt Britt Baker. Okay. I'm sorry. Britt Baker, I don't care what anyone else thinks of her. I think Britt Baker is probably going to be one of the top stars in the next five years. Easy. Hold hold, hold on, Smitty. Hold that thought. What is the tapping going on here? Are you? I think think that's just a loose part of my microphone, to be completely honest. Does it keep happening? All we hear... It's almost like you're you're playing the drums for a second here. What, what's going on here? You, I think it could just be my it could just be the headset. Are you are you moving your head around? That's what's going on here. See, no, he's an animated guy, folks. <laughs> he doesn't believe in what he's saying, so that's why he's playing this little. He's playing the drums in the background. He's trying to layer some extra music in there to distract you from the fact that what he's saying doesn't make sense. But okay, I, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you, Smitty. I'll, it's I'll let fine. You it's fine. Here about Dr. Britt Break- Baker. You know, she's a dentist, by the way. Oh, d- d- yes, she is. You know, I if I could go to her and have my teeth cleaned, I would. I'm just saying. But, so you have Britt Baker. You have Big Swole. You have Sheeta. Okay? We'll say those are their big three COVID. Okay? Pre-COVID, you had Riho, you know, champion. There's uh, Nyla Rose, who just seems to kind of be floundering around. But I think they kind of booked themselves into a corner with her. Uh, it just, it be quite honest with you, the women's division seems like a complete mess. And I don't, like I said, they're booking the NWA women better than they book the AEW women. Now, I will go out and say that, and I know I've gone on record in saying this before, I do strongly believe that the AEW women's division is the weakest women division in wrestling right now. Would you agree with that? Yeah, I, I guess I can see the point that you're trying to make here. I, I want to make sure that I don't agree with you too much. I don't want to call you <laughs> too much. Now. I see where you're going here. Yeah, there's definitely a lot. There's a lot of potential in AEW. And I know, and we'll probably end up arguing about this too. AEW is trying to build stars. Now, do I think COVID threw a wrench in this? Yes, I do. Should it have thrown a wrench in it? No, it shouldn't have. 
It should have just kept, and obviously if people get sick, people get sick, or if people can't make a show, people can't make a show. But it seems like for their women's division, they went, we have nothing for this. Let's just bring in the NWA women and just have them wrestle. Because people will enjoy that. And yes, we did enjoy that. But where's the division? Now, Dustin's supposed, uh, supposedly the one that took over training all of them, right? Dustin, not only is he taking over training, but between Dustin and QT Marshall and, and, and Brandy, it seems like they're more involved with the booking of the booking now well, as opposed yes. to uh, Kenny Omega. Ken, yeah. Originally piss poor job that he did building that division, by the way. Yeah. there. You know what? And this is another place where a lot of people didn't see eye to eye. Uh, Riho is the first women's champion. I personally think that was a bad decision. However, it seems like every, which is the weird thing. Cause it seems like I love AEW and it's my, favorite wrestling to watch but it seems like when i hate something all the people that usually hate it love it and when i love something everyone's like i can't believe they did that i don't agree that rio should have been the first champion do i think rio is an amazing wrestler i do me personally and i'm uh, probably gonna get hate for this i am not a fan of the joshi style women's wrestling it just doesn't do it for me and in that case, and I can see what Kenny Omega was trying to do. He was trying to bring that variety and expose people. I think it completely missed. And then you had to figure, and then I think they also realized it completely missed. And then it was, well, how do we get the belt off Riho? You know, so they, they put it on Nyla. And I was like, wait a second, we just have this unbeatable beast now. <laughs> but she can't cut a promo to save her life. Ah, oh, we'll put it with Vicky Guerrero. Do I agree that was necessarily the best idea? I don't think Vicky should have been with Nyla. So, you give it to Sheeta. Sheeta, from when she got the belt to now, has, and I know you're probably not going to want to agree with me on this, has grown tremendously as a performer. Not necessarily as a wrestler, because wrestling was always something she did well. But as a performer, because you got to remember, as much as we want to call it wrestling and things of that nature, if you're a wrestling show on TV, it's sports entertainment. And I hate that word, personally. I hate that term. But that's what it is. And just your wrestling is not going to be what gets you over. And I think the issue they ran into is they assumed, oh, we can just show them this, like, different style of wrestling that not a many in the American viewing audience is familiar with. Let's show them this cool style. They'll love it. And I think it flopped and they didn't know what to do. Now, what I'd be curious about is when exactly Kenny stopped booking the division. Because I would say Kenny probably stopped booking the division when they started bringing the NWA women's in. Yeah, I, I don't disagree with you there. And I think that at the end of the day, we t you, when it comes to management, right? So this is yeah. this is the way I look at it. And maybe this is my my blinders, so to speak, because I, okay. I have a extensive management background. I've I've managed in media, I've managed in in government, state and municipal, I've managed in um retail. I'm a manager, and, and, and part of what I do even now is I help companies figure out how to effectively manage. Yep. So that means take people who are not the right people in certain positions, uh, you know, get rid of them, and plug in the people who are actually going to get you to where you need to go, whatever yes. your bottom line is, right? When I take a look at the way that Kenny Omega managed the women's division to start with this company, and I compare that to how the tag team division for the men, how the men's singles division and mm -hmm. all the different subdivisions within that is, you have an abundance of men who live in America. Yep. They were booked, and you had no disruption for the most part over this COVID stuff, and yet... They want to blame COVID for the women not being available to work because most of their women were 
from somewhere other than America or didn't live yep. in America. Now, here's my problem with that. Whose fault is that? I, I, yep. You were the ones who were in charge of managing that. That's your division. It's not somebody else. So if that is the mistake that you made, then fix it because you're, yes. in, you're down in Florida. The mecca of pro wrestling in the world is the state of Florida. There is an yeah. abundance of, of talents in Florida that you could put on TV, put anywhere every day of the week, and you could see it in their dark show, which is an, a, a, an internet show. It's a, it's a mm-hmm. YouTube show. They have indie talents, indie wrestling uh, talents who are women that they feature on dark on a regular basis. You mean to tell me you couldn't plug some of those women in on your TV show when you have these mediocre guys from the dark order who are on TV every single solitary damn week? Yep. And and they're they're literally mediocre, right? You couldn't I, put more women's wrestling on TV. Come on. I mean, I would I would say for the most part they're mediocre, with the exception of Silver and uh, Harper or Brody. As he goes by again, I guess. And I know we probably don't see eye to eye on the Brody comment either. But, but yes, but the th- there's a difference. Brody Brody is a is a is a C plus player, so good for him. See, I, I would give him a B. <laughs> but any we di- as we digress. Uh, here's a major thing though that I don't. The dark o- order's over. Of course, they're going to get screen time. So, like, that, like obviously, that's a little off-topic from what we're talking about with the women's, but you mentioned the Dark Order. They're over. They're over with the fans. Of course, hold they're going to get screen on, Hold on, Smitty. Now, see how, you, see how you try to play your game again, Smitty. What did I do? What did I do? When, when we talk about over, that's yep. still management, right? So, you, you don't you – don't, you're not – no one is ever born or over other than you. No one is ever – I'm, I'm always over. And they're over with everybody. That's something that's built. So, Oh, 100%. You're featured on TV. You're featured on social media. You're featured um, in interviews. You're you're spoken of and presented as something that matters. Mm-hmm. And over time, the consumer accepts you as mattering, right? So, oh, yeah. In mo- I would say in most situations, yes. Not in all, but in most, yes. If the women's division were featured as much as the Dark Order, the entire women's division would be over as well. I see. I don't agree with that. You're out I do. Mind. I do not agree with that. You're out of your mind. Because I there's because there's two aspects to it. There's wrestling ability. You're a wrestler. There's wrestling ability. But then, like I mentioned with Sheeta earlier, there's the performance aspect of it. Now, like I said, I'll go back to the. I'll go back to Brit, and I'll go back to Big Swole. Those two are over. There's no denying those two are over. If realistically we also have to keep in mind booking probably went went a little screwed when Britt got hurt there i fully believe that Britt was supposed to take the belt off of Sheeta. but it didn't happen and of course if th- things are going to happen it's the wrestling industry you have to be ready for that it's not an excuse for anything but i do think that Britt getting hurt kind of threw a wrench in things the dark order is a weird one because they were like, they weren't, if you remember going back to the beginning of AEW, they weren't over. They were not over. And even if they gave them screen time, there are people all over social media saying that they weren't over and they were sick of it. It wasn't until they kind of added another layer to it, which you can't say it was management that did that. I think the Dark Order is more so over because of what they're doing behind the scenes on social media on being the elite which we can talk about being the elite too uh as kind of a management tool but also kind of a tool of whoever wants to get involved can get involved uh so i don't think if you necessarily just because i don't think necessarily if you featured the whip the women's division the same amount as the dark order that the women's division would be as over as the dark order do you, do you understand what I'm, what I'm saying there? I understand what you're saying there. I just think that it's ridiculous, you know, but that, well, it's that like not a surprise. It's I'm trying to, th- I know we don't want to talk about WWE, but I'm just trying to think of wrestlers that they've tried to sh- like, there's been plenty of times where 
different wrestling companies have tried to shove someone down your throat and it hasn't worked. So not just featuring them wouldn't necessarily get them over. Would more airtime give them more potential to be over? Yes. I do think that it, there should be at, le at least 20 to 30 minutes of women's wrestling per dynamite. I'd say. Whether that's one match, whether that's two matches, whether it's uh, two quick matches in a segment, whatever. I think there should be a half an hour pretty much dedicated to the women's division on Dynamite. And they don't do that. They get, do give more time on Dark to the women. Uh, which we can go back and forth about what Dark and what Dark isn't as well. Because to... I won't say diehard AEW fans. I, I guess there's diehard AEW fans. But to people that are all about the AEW pro, uh, product, and by that I mean they watch Dynamite, they watch Dark, they watch Being the Elite, uh, they pretty much put watch anything that's essentially put out by anyone that's involved in AEW. They will have a different view on it than... We would what we would say the casual watcher that only watches Dynamite is that an AEW problem? Yeah, it is. That that's definitely a problem with them. By because the casual watcher and the dedicated watcher are kind of getting two different experiences. It's almost like you're get, the amount of effort you put in to AEW is the product you're going to get back, which necessarily is not a good thing. However. I do think for what AEW is and how it began and the people who started AEW, it's very on brand for how they did everything in their careers. Uh, like the Young Bucks. The Young Bucks, the Young Bucks did everything themselves to get themselves over. There isn't... I'm trying, like, I'm trying to think of a time that the Bucks just when was dude? When was the first time you heard of the Young Bucks? I mean, I, I you know I'm a super fan, so I've I, I'm yeah familiar with those the Jackson brothers for brothers your entire career. So I'm the wrong guy to ask. <laughs> okay, I would so me I I would probably say probably around 2010 is when I started getting into the Bucks. Okay, when I started following i would say that's more so when i started following indie wrestling a lot more in general and that's when i started and then as you know in the past like five years or so i can any indie show that's in the area that i can go to i'll go to and things of that nature and i started consuming those that type of content things of that nature the only reason aew exists and that everyone is where they are right now is because of what the Young Bucks did to get themselves over. You wouldn't have AEW without the Young Bucks. So when we kind of look at this as you'll, you'll say that Manage It is the one that's in charge of getting people over, which I don't necessarily disagree with. But I think the approach AEW has taken is we don't have a creative team. You think of your creative stuff. They've essentially put everything on the wrestlers. So it's on them to get over. It's whether it's via the show, social media, being on dark, being on being the elite. It's on the wrestler or the group itself to get over. Is that necessarily a good thing? Probably not. But it's very on brand for how AEW was made, and I don't blame them for going in that direction. Because in reality, we have to what we, are we at the uh, what Dynamite's been on for what at this point? Uh, a year and two months. Yeah, they started in October, so yeah, yeah. So a year and two, so a year and two months. So we're initially you, you can count the pay per views, you can count the events. But we're still in the very, very infancy of AEW. Uh, it's not an excuse, because I know you're going to say I'm making excuses. It's not an excuse. They're still trying to find their footing. Because you got, you got Tony Khan, and don't get me wrong, I think Tony Khan's done great. Has he? Did he maybe bite off a little bit more than he can chew because of inexperience? 
Yes. When he went out there and said, we're going to change wrestling as you know it, we're going to revolutionize everything. Even as someone who was very excited for AEW and is a fan of everyone that was involved in AEW at that time, I knew he wasn't going to be able to make good on all of those promises. There's only so much. It's like, as you say, uh, management, as you work with a management and trying to figure things out. There's always that guy that will look from the outside in and go, I'm going to do it this way and that way and this way. This is the way it should be done. And then the second the person actually gets into the position, they go, oh, so I can't do it like this for that reason. So it's kind of like, as, as stupid as it sounds to bring up, the winning records. The win and loss records. <clears throat> if you remember correctly, there was supposed to be an on-season and an off-season for these records. <laughs> now, this is yet another thing that we might be able to chalk up to COVID screwing it up. But they still could have done it. They definitely could have had like a, in quotations, off-season where it was just kind of like random exhibition matches. And I think that would have been good for them. I think that would have been a great way to get other talent featured and things of that nature. However, I think because of COVID, that all went out the window. Uh, I like the idea of records. I like the idea of keeping records. I like the idea of a ranking system. Uh, it's... The way I will say the way it's been implemented has had some issues because let's face it, a number five contender probably shouldn't be getting a shot at the belt. How do you feel about that? I think it's ridiculous. I think exactly. Janela, for instance, who is he <laughs> not even a number five con contender? I don't think, I don't think he is. The fact that this guy was out there wrestling uh, Kenny Omega the other night. It's oh my just God. peak. It is peak AEW in its worst form, which is consistent. Their best <laughs> form is their worst form. Okay? That's what I'll say to that. Okay. It, it, that was actually... It, I watched that match, and that match actually made me cringe at times because... It, I... How do I put this? I like hardcore wrestling. I like deathmatch wrestling. There were some spots with that trash can when Kenny Omega hit Joey with it that I went, Kenny doesn't know how to hit somebody with a trash can. Like, I actually honestly think, now, I could be wrong about this, but I've seen Joey Janela perform live on a few different occasions. By the end of that match, I don't know if he was acting or not, but he legitimately didn't look like he knew where he was. And that worried me a little bit. And that kind of made me a little concerned. Because there's several spots there where Kenny straight up just smashed that. Like, there's the foot stomp one where he literally stomped right on Janela's head. Like, you can watch. You can. Let's talk about that, though, Smitty, because this is nothing new for AEW. We remember the guy that was in the match and he was knocked out completely. And as, as Big Vito said on this show, all the marks in the ring like the Young Bucks, they finished the match working around him while this yep. guy is completely laid out in the ring. This so, is an AEW thing. Tony Khan, are you okay, brother, to Matt Hardy when he was – Oh, my God. Out? Yeah, the, I mean, the Matt, the Matt Hardy situation was terrible. It, like, th that's one thing we can, we can definitely agree on. The Matt Hardy situation was awful. That was handled terribly. Like, that is something we can agree on. Well, what about the other knucklehead I just mentioned who was laid out? So, who, by the Alex, way, Alex Reynolds. The other day saying, well, you know, I, I, I wasn't really knocked out, guys. Well, so, I was, I was, I was going to ask if you actually, if you had heard that. Yeah. What was he doing then? He wasn't playing. So, <laughs> so the way, so the way, Al, the way Alex explained it on the, uh, what was it? Yeah, he was on the Unrestricted Podcast. The way he explained it was... When he got hit, he wasn't knocked out, but he knew that something was up. He wasn't knocked out. He he says he remembers everything. Like I said, you, you can believe what he's saying or not, because you can obviously say he might just be saying this to save face for AEW and things of that nature. But based on what Alex Reynolds said, it was he wasn't knocked out uh, when the situation happened. He did feel he did know that something 
wasn't right. And the spot where he gets dragged to the corner was a scripted spot. Now what he says after this is that he rolls out of the ring. And when he rolls out of the ring, this is when he starts doing his self-checks. Of like, all right, fingers, toes, you know, like, don't, not a stinger, you know, what's going on? And he looked at the ref and he goes, I'm okay. I'm good. I'm, I'm good to go. It was just like, you know, some weird thing happened, but I'm good to go. And then he, and then he went to get up off the ground and get back into the ring. And as he went back into the ring is when he realized, no, no, no. I'm not okay. And it was at that point that they uh, called back to the doctor and everything like that. And Alex Reynolds was out of the rest of the match. He wasn't involved in anything else. Smitty, okay. let me tell you something. I'm not going to blame the talent for, for spinning the most ridiculous tale oh, yeah. you ever hear in your life. I'm not going to blame him, but I am going to blame the company for, for lacking professionalism enough to recognize that this guy was not a. Sometimes you got to protect the talent from definitely. The oh, definitely, right. definitely. So this is an AEW thing. I mean, when we go back to this Kenny Omega Joey Janela match, the first thing that happened in the match was a headshot. Headshot, headshot. Yeah. Think about that. that and that's and I happened. and I can agree with that. We can go back to when uh they did the uh spot with Sean Spears and Cody. Even with even if it's a rig chair, even if it's a rig chair, that's not a spot you do anymore. And I would say that I would say that they learned their lesson on that until we started that match with a headshot. And it's just like, come on, okay, like that, like that. Yeah, headshots in wrestling need to go We're not in general. Dealing with professionals here. We're dealing with people who think they know better, and they prove time and time again that they are completely out of their league. They don't know what they're doing. I, you know, Tony Khan was in my inbox yelling at me. Um, well, that doesn't shock me. Oh, well, yeah, demanding that I stop. I, I guess he called it raging at them about things that they weren't doing right, which I was right, and he actually admitted I was right, uh, which is another <laughs> ironic part of it, too. He, he admitted that every that what I was saying, he could see how, yeah, yeah, we're wrong. But it's like, it's, but but he wanted me to stop anyway. Which, yes. Tony, I know you're listening. I know you use your burner accounts to talk sh- nonsense to me. I'm, I'm trying not to swear on my own show. Talk nonsense know, right? on, my, on my Twitter. And I just want to say to you, Tony, until you grow up and do your job as a president of a company and stop marketing one thing and lacking the business ethics to actually deliver what you claim you say you're going to deliver – I'm going to eat you up every single day of your miserable life, Tony Khan. And you can tell your 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 your, your daddy with his dick dastardly mustache, stop the pigeon, stop the pigeon. You can tell your daddy that he can come talk to me, and I'll tell him to his face as well that he's a disgrace. Because the way that you treat these wrestlers and the way you treat your soccer players, your football players, the lot of you are a disgrace. I don't respect you. I don't like your business ethics. I don't like the way you do your thing. And I'm going to call. You are going to hear from me consistently until you start delivering on what you claim you can do. Okay? So, Tony Khan, TK, whatever you want to call yourself today, just understand that, yeah, brother, I'm not going to stop, no matter what you say. So, you can come back in the inbox if you want. I think it's a joke, by the way, um, because that's what you are. But, you know, all the money in the world ain't going to save you from the tongue lashing you get from me, brother. That's just the way it is. But anyway, getting back to the point, because, you know, here on Duke Loves Wrestling, we've taken hits for for pointing out CTE. Oh, yeah. Concerns about that. I mean... You know, I, I keep telling you don't bring up WWE. WWE has essentially blackballed me. I can't even interview any of their talents active because of I'm not shocked. CTE coverage, right? So yeah, for all hey. of you out there to call me a WWE mark, I don't know how that works because WWE, they're no friends of mine. They can't stand the fact that I call them out the way that I do on this show. I mean, um, you know, and, and, and Smitty, you know, I, I'm pretty consistent about the things that I complain about. Um, yeah, AEW is just completely embarrassing with the way that they have unprofessionally put their talents in harm's way, and they don't want to own it, right? 
No, and I, I agree with that. I think uh, one of the major... This is where I think AEW is trying to find their balance. They want the wrestlers to be in control. Like, that was the whole thing. They wanted the wrestlers to be in control. You figure out your gimmick. You figure out your promos. Like, you figure out your matches. Like, things of that nature. But there has to be a line. Like, regardless if you want to give them freedom, you also need to give them a list of, like, you can't do this. Like, you can't run up and hit somebody in the head with a trash can. Like... That you just can't you can't do that anymore. I see that's even I watch that stuff and I'm like, really? And I'm a fan of AEW. I'm a huge fan of Joey Janela. Like, which probably people will eat me up for. But in Ah, jelly, jelly, jelly. I I love Joey Janela. Like, you know, I've always like it, I've been a fan of Joey Janela since the first time I saw him wrestle because even as crazy of the spots and stuff he would do, he always struck me as a guy that could wrestle. Uh, and that's why I liked him. And um, obviously you throw the insane stuff. I've seen him go through barbed wire and all that fun stuff. So there's that. And then, and I can easily say that I think Joey Janela has been booked terribly since he's been signed to AEW. But at the same time, I'm just kind of happy Joey's there. <laughs> Like, and I think that's where there is some differences in opinion of the booking, because I'm just, I'm one of those people that as much as I like a guy, somebody's got to lose and somebody's going to have to take those losses. Somebody's going to have to put people over. And unfortunately it's, I mean, he got what Ken, uh, Janela got that one win over Kenny in that like weird match. And then. Did he win that the first one? I don't. I don't. See, I I can't even remember now. Like they had that hardcore match, and I think Janela won, or Janela almost won, or something stupid. Uh, I mean, Joey Janela and I are the same size, and and we have the same belly. So the fact that he's out there <laughs> being presented as anything on TV is embarrassing to me because it's like, well, Jesus Christ, you might as well listen. You can sign me. And, you know, I won't take less than what you're paying, Janela, but I'll probably give you more bang for your buck at this point because, you know, that's it. Well, see, and, and I could say it, I could argue that I feel like they need to book Janela in some better feuds with some people that are. I think Joey Janela would shock a whole lot of people if they put him in the ring with someone super technical. Uh, not like Kenny Omega super technical, but like an actual technical grapple wrestler, I'll say. I think Joey Janela would actually shock a lot of people if you brought him down to that level. But that's not what he's there for. Let's let's be realistic here. Joey Janela is not there for his wrestling ability. Joey Janela got signed because of his ability to promote. Joey Janela got signed for his ability to go viral. Okay? You see a guy that is hosting events, WrestleMania weekend, and selling out, and having... Arguably, people saying the best show of WrestleMania weekend and stuff like that. Why wouldn't you want that guy in your company? It seems like a no-brainer. But you also have to remember Joey Janela has also helped pretty much booking for GCW and promoting for GCW. And he has all of his side gigs going on. What's Joey really care if he's going on Dynamite collecting a paycheck and winning? Uh, and that's how I kind of look at it and don't get mad about his booking. And But you can easily look at it from the other way and be like, they're just burying Joey Janela. And like we had that conversation about Sonny Kiss. We had that argument about that. Let's see where we said, let's see what they do with Sonny Kiss in a month. You know what, dude? They didn't do anything with Sonny Kiss. You were right on that. They 100% just let Sonny Kiss go away. And the only reason Sonny Kiss even got that match because they accidentally announced it. <laughs> Well, so, Smitty, I'm going to hold you accountable for that because you bring up a good point. <laughs> you have a habit, and not just you, but these AEW faithfuls who who want to – they want AEW to be something that AEW is not. Uh, they, elaborate. They, they promised you that they were going to be the answer to all of your problems that you have with other companies, and unfortunately – 
they've turned out to be just as bad, if not worse, than the companies that you have a problem with. And Sonny Kiss is a prime example. They did nothing with Sony Sonny Kiss for so long. Mm-hmm. From the beginning. Mismanagement completely. Yeah, I did I agree with that. Then they put him in that match with Cody. Yep. And and, and that's when you and I had that conversation. Exactly. Like, They've done nothing with Sonny Kiss. They buried Sonny Kiss in that match. You were like, no, this is they put him over. They put him in with Cody. He looks good. And they're gonna, you know, just watch. Just give it time. And, they're gonna do something with him. And I fully believed it when I said it. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I guess it, it, Sonny Kiss has been worse since then. <laughs> yep, I know, I know, and like I said, I can agree with that. And like He's I have manager, or she, I is have manager. Yeah, I have no problem in admitting being wrong with that. But there is certain situations where you do like. Let's be realistic here. A person can lose a ma- a good match and still get over, right? Like it happens in re- it it happens in wrestling. It you do it right, you can do it. Don't do that. Don't do that. We're talking about AEW in particular. No, no, no. I I know, but that, I'm just saying that's why I said give it a month and just see what see what happens. Well, what because have they done? they've actually used they haven't done shit less since then. He's right. Yeah, they, since they then. yeah they did that whole like thing with Joey and Sonny where they were, like, doing that whole team-up thing, which I guess, like, they still are a team, but they don't, like, wrestle in the tag team division, so... Sonny is, like, Joe, is, is Joey Janela's uh, manager. That's all it is. That's like, that's essentially it what it's starting to look like. So, and I agree. So here's here's my issue with this, right? Because you, you talked about the women and, and Dark Order. Yep. I, I brought that up, and you, you elaborated. Here's my point. This is a business, Say this is a business. When you take and, and, and AEW's business model, the way that it's structured, the money that they make the most is from AEW Dynamite because they they make yes. the money off of the advertisement deal from the TV deal that they have with TNT, right? Yeah. So who you feature on Dynamite is who you're letting the world know is your most valuable entities within the company. Yes. So that that's a it's very important that whomever is featured on TV consistently, that is who the company has the most faith in. It's clear. Honor, yeah. Either the I would say either the company has the most faith in, or person that is most over with the crowd. I would say well, no, are the two probably, major things. The company still has to make the decision. And when I hundred hundred percent, hundred percent. Clearly, we're talking about Tony Khan and whomever else is making the decisions of who's on TV. Gotcha. So, yeah. So here's my point, though. I take a look at who they're not featuring on TV. Right? Yep. So when you only feature one women's match per week, you mm-hmm. have essentially devalued your women. You and, and this is a company that said they were going to pay women as much as they pay the men. Oh, that was yep. a big thing, right? So yep. you have actually put the women in a position where they are so devalued, they could not possibly make as much as the men. It will not. There's no one making as much as Jericho in the women's division. There's oh no, no one making as much as 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 Kenny Omega. There's. I don't even think there's no. a woman on the roster other than Brandy, possibly, who's <laughs> making as much money as MJF. Ooh, that'd be that'd actually be an interesting thing to look into because I, I like. I, I bet you Orange Cassidy's making more than all the women. Uh I guarantee. I don't. It may, it's possible through merch. Let me put I'll it say to you it. merch. I'm talking about contract. Let me put it to you like Oh, you're just talking straight up contract. Okay. Orange Con- Orange Cassidy's value in the marketplace because he's been featured as the way that he has on AEW Dynamite. His value in the marketplace is so high. It is not possible. There's not a single woman under contract in AEW right now whose market value is as high as Orange Cassidy right now, and it's solely because of the way that the company has featured them all. I can agree to an extent about that because it's Orange Cassidy. Orange Cassidy yes. is not a good wrestler. In fact, his gimmick is that he's not a good wrestler. 100%. Right? It, it, yep, I love it. So, so Sheeta, 
So Sheeta, who's been wrestling this whole time, there's no way Orange Cassidy is going to make less money than her. No, I'd, I'd probably agree, but I'd also say that Ar- if because this goes back to remember me saying about how Cheetah has evolved as a performer. If this goes back to who's more like, you can say that they're not featuring the talent, and that's why they're not over. Which I will say is a, va- a valid argument. But I think something that a lot of people don't realize is a lot of these guys were very over in the indie scene before AEW. Obviously, obviously they're bigger now. Obviously, they're bigger now. Stop it, Smitty. No one's ever. No one knew who the hell CM Punk was before he got to the WWE. I did. What he did in ROH, he was a nobody. He was a nothing. He was a nothing happening indie hack nobody. Same thing with Daniel Bryan. He was a oh. nobody. And I was at that first ROH show to watch the American Drag. He was a nobody. He was a nothing. He was a nothing happening guy. I love me some American Drag. And he became somebody. Okay. Chris Jericho was in WCW. He was a nobody. Oh, that, that I can agree with. WWE. That I can that I can agree with. So don't you tell me that Orange Cassidy had built up enough of a name for himself on the indies to justify him making more money than all of the other all the women on the roster, not named Brandy Rose, who's an executive technically. That's just a bunch of baloney. I, you know what, I, I feel like I could argue that Orange Cassidy had a bigger buzz going into AEW than probably anyone in the women's division when AEW started. When AEW started. AEW has champions. Orange Cassidy hasn't held a single title in AEW yet, has he? No, nope, no, he hasn't. So think about this for a second. Your champ this guy's is 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 going to command more money than your champions because you've featured him more than your champions. That is embarrassing. That is I, like, but like I said, I also feel that going at the beginning of AEW, even not even at the beginning of AEW, just in general. Orange Cassidy had more of a buzz in indie wrestling and in the scene where the, because you got to remember also what the core AEW fan group kind of is. The core AEW fan group is mostly people that were fans of fans of indie wrestling and didn't like what WWE was putting out. Go deeper than that. They were your average young white males, right? Okay, yeah, I can give you that. Let's call it what it is. That's well, what I can give you that. I mean, yeah, it's the... So it's a the, guy like Orange Cassidy is going to appeal to them because he probably is more relatable to now, them than anybody else. He looks like their fan base. With the scruffy beard, he looks like their fan base. So let's call it what it is. They see themselves in Orange, right? I mean, I... See, I this is where we won't... We won't see eye to eye on Orange Cassidy. I already know this. Because... You look like Orange Cassidy. If you had his color hair, you would be Orange Cassidy. You're the same. Oh, guy. yeah. I mean, he's, yeah, he's a, he's a generic looking white guy. <laughs> That's it. That's, so, of course, he's going to get over with the, with the fan base they're trying to appeal. But I don't. But here's the thing Are you strictly just saying that Orange Cassidy got over because he just looks like a generic white guy? No. Or- Orange okay. Cassidy got over for, for two reasons. Number one, he's a hardworking guy. So, listen. And, and I'm not gonna. I'm not ever going to take away from the talent. I don't. I don't. I don't attack the talent. I don't. Okay. Believe, I think the talent is a talent. They do their hard work, and I, I believe in the boys and the girls. I would never do that. I I have an issue with management. I have an issue with the office. So anyone listening, my my criticism is always of the office, never of the talent, unless the talent's doing something dangerous. Orange Cassidy is a hardworking guy, and I, I applaud him for what he's been able to accomplish. But I do not believe Orange Cassidy would matter had it not been for the machine behind him in AEW. And I feel like if they would have taken somebody like, say, Leva Bates. Okay. And promoted her the way that they promoted Orange Cassidy. Not only would she be just as over, she's actually a much far better wrestler than he is. Oh so yeah, she's she's a great wrestler. Over. She'd be more over than Orange Cassidy. So this is my point. This is this is a conscious effort to take somebody and make them something because you liked. And Tony Khan is playing with his toys. So let's let's not. Oh yeah. Any game. 
Chris Jericho doesn't deserve a, a, a dime over what WWE was offering him for a contract. So the fact that he's getting paid as much as he has is embarrassing. Mm. Um, but, it, you know, when a money mark who Chris Jericho is his favorite wrestler of all time wants to give him that kind of money, then yeah. this is going to happen, right? Yeah. So Orange Cassidy is somebody that, that Tony Khan is a mark for. So this is why Tony made it his business to put Orange over. I don't think Tony yep. Khan gives a damn about women's wrestling, and I'm going to say that because based on his his uh, actions. So, Tony, if you want to send me a cease and desist for pointing out what I observed, I'm going to take it and wipe my ass with it because I'm going to tell you right now, you don't respect women's wrestling based on the way that you've done what you've done, okay? Because there isn't a single woman in that company who you featured the way you featured Orange Cassidy, and your top woman in, who, who appears on your TV show doesn't even have a contract with you in Thunder Rosa, who's a better wrestler than everybody in your company combined, by the way. Agreed. Uh, she she is far and away over without anything you've ever done. And that's ironic, right? She was already over before she came. Into okay, the- so wait a second. Let's go back to that then. How did Thunder Rosa get over? Was it management or was it herself? I'm going to tell you. You want me to tell you how Thunder Rosa got over, honestly? By being an amazing wrestler and authentic. There was a concerted effort with many of us who recognized her talent yeah. and who would not stop beating down the door of every magazine, every wrestling promotion, every website, every podcast. Okay. We all, and I say we, and I'm going to include myself in this because I've featured mm-hmm. her numerous times. Yeah. Uh, we helped build the brand because the brand was that damn good. But you got to remember yeah. something. Thunder Rosa was was in Lucha Underground as Serpentine. Yep. And she was also in, uh, excuse me, as Cobra Moon. And she was also in Wild Superheroes as Cobra Moon and then Serpentine. She was already on TV. Yep, that's fair. So we can't act as if, like, she was already thrust into the spotlight, man. And then when, when NWA came, even though that's a web show, but she had already been on national TV at that point. So... Even okay, so it was a collective effort, but who so how did Thunder Rosa get over? Was it management related or was it essentially on her own? And when I say on her own, she was I do featured on TV exactly. TV. And, and, and why was she featured on TV? Because everyone She's was that damn good, exactly. And everyone was vouching for her and wanted her to be successful and said that she was great, but speak, correct, there were other people who were not featured as often as she was. And for that reason, they're not over. No matter how good of a wrestler they are, they're, they don't have the same brand and name recognition that she does. Yep. So there's that side of the coin, which is my point with the with the whole women's division compared to some of these mediocre uh, men in AEW. The yep. women are not as over as the men because the women are not being featured as much as the men and in the same way. It's not that there's a lack. You can't tell me you can't take a big sw- big swole is Bianca Belair with experience. Yeah. That's like what I said. Like, she's a superstar, right? Yeah. Swole, Swole could definitely be a superstar. Definitely could be, like, they could put they could put the belt on Swole and make her the face of the women's division. There wouldn't be an issue. She could be I, the face of the entire company. She's a yeah. military vet. She is. She has that southern twang in her accent. She she can wrestle. She can talk. She's relatable. And she got the swag. Interacts with it. She has a swag. Anybody interacts with it can relate to her. She's she's so good. It's like here's a person that literally, I don't even think Sasha Banks, in all of her intangibles, and I love Sasha Banks. I feel mm-hmm. like Big Swole, if she had the same kind of machine behind her, would be much bigger than Sasha Banks. Much bigger. Because unlike Sasha, Big Swole is a much better promo and has a better story behind her in, in the whole Air Force or whatever. Yeah, that's true. She's in. Big Swole, I, I mean, listen, I don't care. You, the worst promoter in the world could market her and make her the biggest star in the world because she's she's built and ready to go. I don't know. I wouldn't push it that far just because, you know, there, there are promoters out there that just don't get it. But, yeah, uh, she, Tony she, she is at the top of that list. She Big Swole definitely, like, Big Swole has the package. That we'll just we'll say it that way. Big Swole has the package. She has the superstar package. All it just it just needs that spark. 
It just needs that one thing to happen. But it, the one it, thing it, is it, the it, company to be behind her. Oh, hundred percent. I agree with you. I Maybe like we said the the book the booking isn't great, and like I said, it, it you know what as as lo- much as I love Thunder Rosa, as much as I like Serena Deeb, why are you showing the NWA women and not your own women? Like I enjoy the matches in their bet, and, and for the most part, especially if it's a Thunder Rosa match, it's a better match than you would probably get out of the AEW women's division. Like put put Swole and Thunder Rosa against each other. Oh my give us, god! Like, give us that. Give us that. Like, you know, yeah, that's, that's like a great match. It's yeah, a great that would be, match. that would be amazing match. It's just like the NWA Women's title, like the AEW Women's title, is taking a backseat to the NWA Women's title. What does that and tell it, you about in its perception of the people under contract in his company? Oh no, I 100 percent agree. Now, could we say this is Tony Khan's fault? The people booking the division, Listen, obviously. Bro. Obviously, ultimately, everything is Tony Khan's fault because he Tony runs the company. Khan told me himself, he writes the show, and I'll just leave. That's it fair. There. That's he, fair. He, he he told me I should know I write the show. So and so he, he didn't say it in a nice way. He was trying to be a, a smart ass with me about it. But so I don't have a choice but to blame Tony Khan because that's Tony fair. Khan told me to blame him basically. That's fair. That's definitely you know what I think I remember. I think I remember the tweet you're talking about now, actually. Brother, where he I said, gotta, "If he, I yeah, <laughs> yeah, I think I remember what you're talking about now." But yeah, it's just like I said, I don't. As much as I love Thunder Rosa and Serena Deep, I just don't get why it's happening. Even if you think your division is garbage, still put them out there. So, like, so let me ask you this, Smitty. Let me ask you this: Where does where does AEW go in 2021? Do you think that they're going to continue to succeed, or are they going to take steps backward? I mean, we take a look at what what Kenny Omega wins the AEW uh, (laughs) championship, and the first thing he does is he appears on Impact on Access TV. Yes. And, you know, they popped a rating greater than they had ever before on Access TV, not since Spike TV had they had the numbers that they had. Exactly. But then this week they tanked. Oh, 100%. they lost more than half of whatever they gained the previous. Oh, because well, I think it, it that first week spike mostly had to do. It was the first event after the pay per view, so it was the first appearance. So you're going to get not only the impact fans, but you're going you are going to get the like I watched. You're going to get the AEW fans just for that curiosity bit of. Oh, I wonder like how what they're gonna because everyone knew what they were doing, but it's like oh, I wonder how they're gonna approach this or whatever. We saw how they kind of approached it. Well, I don't. I didn't need to turn on Impact this week. I'll wa- I'll watch the review of it. Like, and it's kind of how I always watch Impact. If I hear there was something good on Impact, I'll go and watch the match. But I very rarely watch all of Impact, mostly because I don't have access, like most people. Um. Uh, but yeah it's for AEW in 2021 I do think they're going to keep going and I think they're going to keep getting better and I think they're going to be bigger and better I don't think that AEW is going to tank in 2021 at all Um, is there definitely some things to fix most definitely there is I'd be if anyone that is out there AEW fan or not if you don't think there is nothing wrong with AEW, you're being biased. You're being jaded. It obviously has issues. This would be like a WWE fan saying there's no issues with WWE. Like, let's be real. Just because you like it doesn't mean there that there isn't issues with it. I would say the number one thing that AEW has to work on is the women's division. I fully believe that AEW, like we talk about how AEW, we say AEW made all these promises and didn't come through on it. I think AEW's got the best tag team division in the world. So I think they 100% <laughs> came through on that. See, I think they got the best tag division in the world. Listen, so Listen, they have the best tag team division in the world that's underutilized. Their tag team division, I mean, come on. Look, look at Santana and, and Ortiz, right? They're a perfect yep. example of AEW's tag division. Here yep. are two guys that legitimately – are a top three tag team in the world, and you never know it because in the company that they're in, they've been buried so much, doing absolutely nothing 
you have forgotten that they are the former LAX guys who literally could roll with See, anybody. I don't even refer to them as LAX. I refer to them as EYFPO. <laughs> okay, so then you get it. Yeah, like it's like they. I, the first time I, I the first time I ever saw them wrestle was at Beyond Wrestling Live. I think they were teaming up with uh, Team Pazuzu because they would roll with Pazuzu. I believe. Uh, so so it was like them and Dickinson and I think uh, Pinky Sanchez teaming together. Uh, yeah, they are one of the greatest tag teams in the world. Now, would I like to see them wrestling tag team matches more? Of course I would. Do I think they're being buried? No, not at all. Uh, I think they ran, because if you remember, when they first came in, they were wrestling a bunch of tag team matches at the very beginning there. Okay. And then what I think happened is the whole thing with FTR. Like, they knew that FTR would be coming to AEW. So instead of pushing someone to, like, the top of the division all of a sudden, just to have them drop it to FTR, I think they kind of just did what they went along and did with the situation. Do I think Santana Ortiz should be wrestling more? Yes, I do. I could watch them two tag team wrestle all day. I would love to see uh, them in private party again. Because that that would be a banger, uh, but even still, I think I still think AEW has the best tag team division. You can argue about the booking of it, and like I said, it. I don't think the booking for the tag team division has been bad. Personally, you we can have the argument about not putting people over and things of that nature, but I think that's wrong too. Like you took Private Party, who went from like. I saw a private party in front of a crowd of like 40 people about a year and a half before they got signed to AEW. Okay. So you take someone like private party. I would say private party is a bigger deal now than they were when they signed. Do you agree? Yeah. I, I mean, private party. I don't know. No one knew who private party was uh, when they got. Yeah. I, yeah that, and that's what I mean though. If no, I would say that a lot of people didn't know who they were when they were signed. Because they also came on, what is it, House of Glory, HOG? Yep. They re- yeah, they wrestled in HOG a lot too. I personally saw them at uh, Wrestling House of Tomorrow down in FET and down in uh, Rhode Island, uh, which was uh, JT Dunn's promotion for a bit. Uh, and when I first saw them, they actually were a trio. And me and my buddy sat there and he went, you know what, if you get rid of that third guy, they got something. Well, guess what they did? They got rid of the third guy. <laughs> so I would say that they're definitely bigger stars than they are now. They're definitely looking like they're trying to get the acclaimed over, uh, which they got a title shot against the Bucks next week, which I 100% don't think they're going to win. But I still think it's going to be a banger of a match, and no one's going to look at that and go, oh, that team sucks. I think they'll look at that team and go, wow, it's a really good tag team. I want to see them wrestle again. So so they invest in a, a tag team in a, in a company that has more tag teams they know what to do with. Meanwhile, they're black male singles wrestlers. Not a single one of them are being pushed as legitimate contender to the AEW championship. Think about that. For the AEW championship? That's the, that's the thing that matters the most. All right. Ricky Starks barely wrestles on on Dynamite in singles matches. By the way, yeah, he's he's mostly on Dark, and I think he had a banger of a match on this past Dark too. To be honest, do you know what I th- honestly think the big the what would solve a lot of these issues? AEW needs a second show. No, 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 no. no I no. think AEW needs a second no, show. No, no, no. You need to stop featuring the Dark Order every week. You you need to stop doing twenty minute. Uh, Chris Jericho segments. Okay, I, mean, I can agree with that. I mean, come on, man! Like, like this, this, this is why. But the thing is, why are you going to stop doing Dark Order segments when the ratings pop for the Dark Order? Like, because, like we said, we got to remember this is a business. Why? Like, obviously, no, you do have to pop for the Dark Order because the Dark Order has been shoved down everyone's throat. This isn't a. This isn't a a, a, a hard thing to understand. If I mean, featured actual people who wrestle better than them, like a Ricky Starks, the ratings would pop for Ricky Starks too. He's that damn good. 
right? Oh uh, yeah, I think Ricky Star- I think Rick starts is amazing. Dude. Are you gonna tell me Scorpio Sky isn't a better wrestler than everyone in the Dark Order? Come on, <sighs> Scorpio Come on. Sky. It, Scorpio Sky is amazing. Do you know who I'd love? If uh, it's funny you mentioned that, because you know what match I would really like to see. Now that you mention it, I'd like to see Scorpio Sky and John Silver. Like in a legitimate match, because so I'm also Scorpio Sky is a bigger deal than John Silver. I uh, I would agree with that. Yeah, I mean, I love I love John, I love far more than Scorpio Sky on on Dynamite over the past year. Yeah, and and, and one of the reasons, which is uh, I know is a point of contention for you, uh, one of the reasons for that's uh, being the elite. Which but, but see, that's not. But see, this is my point, though, Smitty. You're right. But this is my point. You is has there ever is there a single black male singles wrestler who has been featured on Being the Elite, featured on AEW Dynamite at least three times a week in a month, and so who you're saying been a top contender for the title? So they so the criteria is being on Being the Elite and being featured on Dynamite, bro. The people who are at the top of the card; those are the two things they have in common. <laughs> wait, wait, I wouldn't. No, I wouldn't. I no. To be completely, to be completely honest, I'm thinking about it right now. I'm trying to think of somebody that's in the AEW was in the AEW Championship hunt that was on being the elite because Kenny really hasn't been on it much. To be like Kenny's obviously the champ now and has been on it. I'm thinking about when Mox had the belt. There wasn't really anybody that was a constant fixture on being the elite. Who did that Mox got a shot at Mox? Who did Mox feud with? Well, well, to get the belt, he feuded with Jericho. Okay, so you tell me Jericho never was on being the elite. I don't. I think I've seen Jericho on being the elite maybe once. Okay, that's one more than every other okay. black wrestler in the company. So no, okay. it's, that's not true. I saw Will Hobbs on the the other day. I've seen Scorpio Sky on it. I've seen. Tell me, tell me who Will Hobbs is. Has Will Hobbs beaten anybody on the contract? I, see, in AEW? I mean, I, I that's that. that's not the question you asked. You just asked me if I see him on being the elite. But, so, so, so but no, I 100 percent so that. Will and Jericho have had the uh, an equal amount of times on being the elite. Okay, I'll give you that. Okay. Okay. So it's mostly the people that are on being the elite is the mid card, and to be quite honest about it. It's mostly people that are just hanging around and want to be on it. Like, have you uh, like ha- have you ever like sat down and watched Being the Elite? Are you trying to tell me that black male singles wrestlers who barely get featured at all would not jump at the chance to be in on Being the Elite? I think it's more of a situation of are you there when they decide to start filming stuff stop for it, Being the Elite? It. See, Smitty, you're not going to insult the intelligence of the listeners of Duke Loves Wrestling. You're not going to do that. No one ever oh, appeared dude. on being the elite who didn't want to be on being the elite. Okay, and and it's not like people. Oh, that's know okay. Going to yeah. Film the next episode. Come on, if you told Ricky Starks, listen, Ricky, we want Ricky's to been on the it. elite every week for the next two months, and that's going to coincide with with your matches on Dynamite. So it's going to be a continuation like we do with the Dark Order. You're going to tell me Ricky Starks isn't going to make himself available for being the elite every but- single week? But I, I'm also going to say that Ricky Stark has also been on being the elite. And I'm not saying that people can't be like, hey, I'm really interested in being the lead. I kind of like to be on it like when you guys film us up. I'm not saying that they can't do that. But most of the being the elite stuff, it's like, all right, we have like three hours before we have to go to the airport. Like. I have to fly back this way. Let's like film something. Oh, we have like an hour before dynamite starts. Let's film like it's stuff like that. It's very rare that something's just like planned out. We like a week in advance. Like this is what we're going to do. The only thing that's like that now is they have the uh, being the elite belt or whatever, which in like, that's probably the only thing that they essentially do any planning for because they have to get multiple people together to do it. Smitty, so then how is the Dark Order always on being the elite? Because they're just always there. Okay, <laughs> okay Smitty. So, ladies and gentlemen, uh, as you can hear from Smitty, he's never going to stop being an apologist for uh, <laughs> TK and Cody. I guess we can call him Cody Rhodes now since yeah, he's really not, he got the, have his name. We can, we can call him Future Father. Uh, we can call and, and congratulations to Brandy and Cody. You know, somebody asked me, "Well, why did you send that message to Brandy and Cody Rose?" Because I can, I congratulated them. Yeah, that's like 
I said, well, because, because, you know, that's a, that's a very beautiful thing. They're going to have yeah. a child, and, and I hope it's a beautiful, healthy child. And it's like, like, well, you don't like them. And it's like, I, no, I no, it's not that you don't like them. You don't like the product that they're putting out because it's not what they said they were going to do. Exactly. I don't like the way they're doing their job. I don't have a problem with them person. I don't know them personally. To, to it's like, it's like, it's, it's like the people out there that like a wrestler cuts a promo or does something healed. They're like, man, I re-, like it. It's just true. It's true. Mark stuff is what it really comes down to. Like, no, they're, they're people. They're having a kid. Like, that's cool. Every like the stuff that happened with Dusty and like stuff like that. You know, Cody wants to be a father, like you know. So like that that was nice. Like, and if there's anyone out there that are like giving them a hard time because Brandy's pregnant, like, what are you doing? Like, seriously. Well, listen. I I hope that whoever this baby is, male or female, I will put a bounty on your daddy's head. <laughs> I will personally have the best of the best train you, and I want right. you to to take them out. Okay, so get uh get Taz to train them. That's right. Get Taz to do it. It'll teach you how to do the kachachame or whatever the hell you say. You say that, and and we're we're gonna straighten Cody out. Maybe it'll knock some sense into him so he learns how to run a wrestling company right. Because you know if this is, I mean, listen, his daddy didn't run wrestling companies right either, which is part no, he did why. Other people had to, you know, make the final decisions. But I think Cody is is doing worse than his daddy, and I don't understand it. So. Well, the thing the thing about Dusty, like like you just said, he didn't necessarily always make the best, like the right or best decision. But Dusty's mind was where his value was. His ability to just think outside the box and see things that other people didn't see could running a promotion, not necessarily his strongest point, but he just had that eye that like view that just personality for wrestling. And I think, I think once Cody stops, I can't believe I'm about to say this. I think Cody's biggest issue when it comes to running AEW and booking and things like that, is he's trying too hard to be his father. And I think once Cody kind of, and I, th- you know what? I think the baby's going to do this too. Cause babies have a weird way of changing people. I think when Cody stops trying to be someone else and starts actually doing things on his own and things that he thinks are good, not stuff that he thinks his father would think is good. I think he'll do a lot better. I could, I could be wrong. I could, he may not like want to be like his father. I could be completely wrong. That's just how I feel about things because his booking style and way of running things seems very familiar. I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take that and I'm gonna run with it before you take it back, this buddy. Let everybody know. If they want to send you any hate mail, uh, where's the <laughs> best place that they can reach you there? Somebody? So you can uh, – the best place to reach me is probably on Twitter. Uh, you can reach me at smith.com. That's S-M-I-F-F-D-O-T-C-O-M. Or you can find me on Twitch when I stream at twitch.tv slash S-M-I-F-F. That's what I got. I want to thank Smitty for joining us this week. I mean, he is an AEW apologist. You know, the guy just can't help himself. He will find an excuse for them every chance that he gets. But as you heard at the end, he he had to admit the fact that Cody is kind of all over the place. And if he stopped trying to act like his father, maybe he would realize his true potential. And, you know, I'm going to add a little salt to that. Uh, maybe Cody would actually do the right thing if he stopped acting like his father. So, you know, we'll see. Hopefully the baby will snap him out of it and and make him make better decisions as a wrestling booker. So once again, thank you to Smitty for joining us. And thank you, folks. You know, Duke Loves Wrestling on Twitter, on Facebook, Instagram, at Duke Loves Wrestling. And also Duke Loves Wrestling at gmail.com. Send me your voice messages, whatever you want there. Let's talk. You know I don't shy away. Smitty doesn't agree with me on AEW, but hey, this is the great AEW debate. I don't mind having it with anybody. I do it every year. It's okay. It's what we do. That's right. And speaking of AEW, I had somebody say to me the other day, Duke, do you think uh, 
Tony Schiavone catches hell because he closes your show every week. And, and I'll be honest with you, you know, Tony's a friend of mine. So if Tony's catching hell, that's okay. I'm sure Tony Schiavone's a big boy. You heard what he said to Don Callis the other day, right? He told him to go F himself or something. So, hey, you know, Tony's a big boy. He can handle himself. And if Tony Khan has a problem with Tony Schiavone closing Duke Loves Rousing every week, good. That's what I have to say to that. So I dedicate this to Tony Khan and to the baby of Cody Rhodes and Brandy Rhodes. The end of this show here, as we do every week, be kind to yourselves, be kind to others. Take it away, Tony Schiavone. This is Tony Schiavone, and we're desperately out of time on Duke Love Wrestling.